you join me in a very windy plumstead outside a dying breed a computer shop in my car with the unobtainable Ryzen 7 Pro 7450G APU which is only supposed to be sold in integrated systems so let's see how this goes so this is my current machine running a Ryzen 5 3400G and just for the fun of it I'm going to see if the B350 chipset in this board will take this new APU I have very little hope of that now I'm going to count the amount of times that I screw in and screw out this cooler today because it's going to be a lot So those of you familiar with AMD CPUs will know how the heat paste can suck the CPU right out the socket. And this CPU has only been in here for three months now, but there it is, glued to the heat sink. So I tend to use this standing knife to just wiggle it in between the lid of the CPU and the base of the cooler. You want to be very gentle because you do not want this flying off bending pins. Uh, there we go. To clean this up, the best place to put the CPU is back in the socket, lock it in. And I'm going to use my favorite cleaning method, a wet wipe. cleaning the base of the cooler because this cooler is going to be used a lot today. Now I could have done this a lot easier had I just planned ahead um, but what's the fun in that? In goes our brand new very expensive APU. Yes, I know the cooler is dirty, but this video is about upgrading, not cleaning. And as expected, nothing. Okay, well, I should have known that this motherboard is on the latest bias back from July. Um, and there's very little chance of a B350 ever getting a BIOS for this. So, up to the B450. Um, so, I bought this board after I read that ASRAG is releasing firmware for the new 5000 series. And I reckoned, well, it should support the older ones. And yes, there you can see the text on the website says it supports 4000 G series. However, when I looked a week ago, it only says improved compatibility, um, not 5000, not 4000. So I bought this board on a gamble. I'm not counting this because it's not our little Ryzen stealth cooler. This is just removing the stock retention brackets. And in goes our new APU to see if it will work with the firmware right out the box. Hmm. 
So this is where things got strange and I wasted even more time. I thought I shorted the power up pins and it came to life except the fan didn't spin. So I thought this is very very weird. Hmm, what to do? Ah, I know. Let's screw around some more. So I'm putting back the old 3400G on this board just to see if things are working. And at that time, it would have been really handy had I saved the latest BIOS to a USB flash drive so then I could have just updated the BIOS. But that sounds like planning and that's not how we're doing things around here. We're looking for maximum screwability today. So this is where I realized that I was um, actually shorting out the power LED pin and not the power switch which is right above it. So now having found the right pins to start this board. Haha. <laughs> can see it is on BIOS 4.1, so just one older than the one that was released two weeks ago. So now I thought, hey, let's give it another try with the new APU, just to waste even more time. So back in goes the new APU. as expected. No dice. The board just resets itself every minute or so. So now I decided let's screw this back into, oh I didn't count that screw, this back into the old motherboard and download the latest BIOS which I should have done at the start actually but and there it is staring me in the face supports 4000 G series but I didn't read that I thought the gamble was still on so in goes our BIOS update out goes the new Ryzen 7 APU And back in comes the 3400G. And this time I had to cool it the other way around, so those little things sticking out made it very difficult to get the RAM in. But eventually I just gave up and thought, nah, it should work. I could have used the other slot, but nah. So, on to tools, which I am one. And this BIOS updater actually scans your flash drive and finds the BIOS, which is kind of cool. You don't have to browse to it. But it was a very slow update, so that gives us time to get rid of the wet wipe we used cleaning the CPU and Bye bye. I'm sure that's how everybody disposes of their thermal grease. So this was sped up like 12 times because it was really slow. And we have the new BIOS running with our old processor. Time for some more screwing around. Out goes the 3400 and in comes the new Ryzen 7. By this stage, I was thinking if this doesn't work now, I'm in for a new 500 series motherboard. Um, so let's see how it goes. 
I'll just make a big fuck up. Move. Ease yourself back into consciousness. 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 So also present on that flash drive was a Windows 10 install and this board was booting off that because I didn't hit <laughs> delete fast enough. That's trying to install Windows. Yes it is. Nice Lovely. work Sherlock. So I restarted it one final time. Check if everything is showing up correctly in the BIOS. There it is. There it is. The processes are working. And what? Egg. it. So this was a nice upgrade for me. I like to use tiny ITX systems. Um, also, I can now run my RAM at 3200. Um, previously, I had to run it at 2400 megahertz. Because this thing has got a much nicer memory controller. Anyways, that's the final build for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me screwing around wasting time. <laughs>